popular stories written by one of the most popular novelists, Charles Dickens. This story seems to have a life of its own and has become synonymous with Christmas traditions everywhere. Bah! All misers are Mr. Scrooge. Families gather together to feast. Carolers sing. People give to others a theme, and the words, God bless us everyone, seem to echo through the ages. And so, we invite you to share with us this timeless tale in hope that we honor the past, celebrate the present, and redeem the future. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. What's the record? Is the town on fire? No, sir, not that we know of. Then pray, Master Noisemaker, what is this howling in the street by serious and sober men? I still at honest work. It's Christmas Eve, Mr. Marley. What? It's Christmas Eve, sir. Jacob Marley is dead. Dead and has been for seven years. Dead on this very night, to be precise. Our belated condolences, Mr. Scrooge. Mm. Indeed, we did not know. Mr. Scrooge, we're gathering donations from the local merchants to give to the underserved. You mean the poor? <laughs> yes, sir. Just a small donation for those who are destitute. Are there no prisons? Well, plenty of prisons. And the Union workhouses, are they still in operation? Well, yes, sir, though I wish... Ah, then there are places for the poor to go. Mr. Scrooge, you must understand... No, I wish to be left alone. If your so-called poor and needy have no other place to go, let them go to jail. But most of them would rather die than go there. If they would rather die, then let them do it and decrease the surplus population. Oh, Mr. Scrooge, surely you cannot mean that. But I do. What happens to the poor is not my business. Good day. Nonetheless, sir, we wish you the tidings of the season. And may God bless you in your days to come. Bah! Humble. To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and... Scrooge was a squeezing. Wrenching. Grasping. Scraping. Clutching. Covetous old sinner. Hard and shocked. Cold and shrewd. Secret and self-contained. Solitary just like an oyster. No warmth could warm him. No wintry weather could chill him. No wind that blew was as bitter as he. Bah! A plague on your merry Christmases, fools, wastrels. Nobody ever stopped him in the streets for conversation or company. No beggars implored him for anything. No children asked him the time of day. And even blind men's dogs would tug their owners into doorways when Scrooge passed by. <laughs> <laughs> but what did Scrooge care? It was the very thing he liked, edging his way along the narrow paths of life, warning all human sympathy to keep a distance. Am I not providing sufficient amount of work, Mr. Cratchit? Or are you merely shiftless by nature? Oh, no, sir. I, yes, I want sir. no disapproving looks from my clerk. Do we have an understanding? Yes, sir. I understand. May I hope you do, sir. I sincerely hope you do. Now fetch a coal for the fire. Yes, sir. At once. But, 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 but only one coal, mind you. I'm not made out of money, though every idler seems to think it. Just one coal, sir. Industry, Cratchit. Industry provides its own comfort. Yes, sir. Come in. We have no footman here to attend doors. If you want inside, you'll open the door yourself. Merry Christmas, Uncle Scrooge. And to you as well, Bob. But surely you should be home by now. It's Christmas Eve, man. Christmas Eve. Bah, humbug. Scrooge, a humbug, Uncle. Surely you cannot mean such a thing. But I do mean it. What reason do you have to be merry? You're poor enough. Come then, Uncle. What reason do you have to be so Dismal. You're rich enough. <laughs> <laughs> what else can I be when I live in such a world of fools as this? 
Merry Christmas. What's Christmas time to you? But a time for paying bills without money. A time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer. Christmas is a good time, Uncle. A kind, forgiving time. Pleasant and charitable. Charitable. And the one time I know of in the long calendar year where men and women seem to open up their hearts so freely and share. Yeah. If I could work my will, every open-hearted idiot who goes up there with a man in Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. <laughs> uncle. <laughs> oh, nephew. Don't be so angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. Us? Who is us? Why, my wife, sir. You have married? Why? Because... I fell in love. Ah, oh, love. <laughs> Useless commodity produces excess children in pain. I must congratulate you, though, nephew. You have marked upon the one thing even more ridiculous than Christmas. Ah, I'm busy tomorrow. There will still be a place at the table set for you, Uncle. Merry Christmas, Uncle Scrooge, and God save you. Uh, Merry Christmas to your wife and family, Bob. Merry Christmas. And to you, sir. I wish you the happiest of times, sir, and the best of lives. And I wish you back to your work. Mr. Scrooge, I was wondering, sir. Wondering, wondering what? Out with it, man. It being almost the end of the week. If you might have your wages that are not due for another whole day, is that it, Cratchit? Yes, sir. Uh, your full wages, too, I suppose, and tomorrow off, that too, Mr. Cratchit, that too? Yes, sir. If convenient, sir, as it is Christmas Day. No, sir, it is not convenient, as you say. Not convenient at all. It's a fine excuse to pick the pockets of honest men every 365th day, year in and year out. There. I suppose there shall be precious little of that after tomorrow. Sir? Your Christmas doings and your sugar plums and other whatnot. It is just one day a year, sir, and the children do so look forward to it. Be sure you're here all the earlier the following day, Cratchit. Yes, sir, Mr. Scrooge. Good night, Mr. Scrooge, and Merry Christmas. Ah! Humbug! Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen. When the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even. Brightly shone the moon that night, though the frost was cruel. When a poor man came in sight, gathering winter fuel. What do you want? All finished, Mr. Scrooge? Yeah. And how was your soup this fine evening? Same as always. Tolerable. Thank you, Mr. Scrooge. You have discriminating taste. And who is this little urchin, your daughter? Oh, no, Mr. Scrooge. Tilly was an orphan, left to the streets, hungry and cold, but I've taken her in as my own. Sweet little thing, isn't she? I see. Will there be anything else, Mr. Scrooge? Yes. The repayment of my loan, due on December 26th, is scheduled. Ah, uh, Mr. Scrooge, I was hoping to possibly talk to you about extending my loan. Extend? Yes, sir, you see, tomorrow is Christmas and all, and I was hoping to give little Tilly... Uh, well, Miss MacDonald, I can see that you have money to waste on frivolity and charity. But rest assured, madam, I will have the money that is due me. Of course, as agreed. No. Thank you, Mr. Scrooge. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Bah, humbug. Therefore, Christian men, be sure, wealth or rain possessing. If you will not bless the poor, you shall not find blessing. Leeches, parasites. The streets of London are throttled with fools. You shall not find blessing. Ooh, ah, what is that? Ebenezer Scrooge. Nothing. They have, they have harassed my 
my senses celebrating this plague of a holiday. in his room with haunting echoes all around of cold impending doom a ghostly shadow from the past as the spirits call this night to lead old scrooge through phantoms dark in hopes to bring him light oh will he hear the visions flee to rid of selfish gain to escape a future bound with lifelong pain, heavy chains, we now watch and pray his heart will be reclaimed. Ooh, ah, I believe I Who's there? How dare you trespass? Ebenezer Scrooge! Oh, who are you and what do you want? life I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Jacob Marley? Humbug. Jacob Marley is dead. I went to the funeral myself. In fact, I was the only mourner. You don't believe in me? I don't. Why do you doubt your senses? Because my senses are human and therefore given to frailty. You, you may be indigested, a bit of gas, <laughs> some undigested bit of beef or potato. But whatever you are, there's more about you of gravy than the grave. Ah! Ah, mercy! Dreadful apparition, why do you trouble me? I have come to spare your soul, wretched man. If it is not too late, if it is not already lost entirely, I, I have come, come to, to help, help you. Help me? But Jacob, I'm doing well. Our business is prospering. In fact, our value has increased. Silence, Silence you fool. fool! Do you not see these chains that bind me? They are of my own making forged of my own greed and lack of kindness. I made them link by link and yard by yard. I put them on of my own free will. Does it look strange to you? Yes. It, it should, should not. not. Your chains were as long and heavy as this seven Christmas Eves ago. I must spend eternity walking the earth, making up for the selfishness of my life. Can I help you, Jacob? There is no help for me. But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business. business! Mankind was my business. The Commonwealth, that was my business. Charity was my business. Mercy was my business. Oh, this time of year I suffer most. Why did I walk past people with my eyes pointed down? Unwilling to look up. Hesitant to help them. Disinclined to the light that led wise men so long ago. My time is nearly gone. Hear me! You're always good to me, Jacob. Speak to me, old friend. Tonight. Will be visited by three spirits. I think I'd rather not. Inspect the first when the bell tolls one. N couldn't I collect them all at once and have it over? Inspect the second when the bell tolls two. No, really, Jacob, I need no visiting spirits. Expect the third when the last stroke of three has ceased to vibrate. <laughs> no, no, don't leave me, please, please. I shall see you no more, Ebenezer. Don't leave me, please, Jacob. We'll not be haunted by you. I will not be haunted. Plagued by the fear of a haunted night, Scrooge fought the growing urge to lay his head and sleep. Oh, no. So he checked the locks on all the doors and barred all the windows. Oh, no, no. I will not be haunted by you, do you hear me? I will sleep. I will sleep well. Hmm. It was not that he believed Jacob Marley, merely. As any good debtor will tell you, it, it is caution that pays the rent. rent. But 
Scrooge quickly succumbed to a deep, deep sleep, as evidenced by an even deeper snore. A deep snore. Oh. Ebenezer. Ebenezer! Wake up, you silly man! Who are you? What are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold to me? Mm, I am. Take heed. Oh, would you so quickly put out the light that I present to you? By what business are you here? Your welfare. <laughs> I can't help but to think a night of unbroken sleep to be more conducive to my welfare. <laughs> Rise and walk with me. No, spirit, I am afraid. There, trust in this. Huh. We must be going. I, no, I have no time for this, madam. We are going into the past. <laughs> and you have time, Ebenezer. And that time is most precious. I'm afraid. What are we doing? The oh, by what magic is this? Oh, not God. magic at all, all but memories. Do you not recognize this place? Do you not remember it? Remember it? Why, this is my old schoolyard. I can walk it blindfold. Why, why, Time at last to go home. Can they not see us? Oh, no, these are shadows of things that have been. They are not conscious of us. Soon this schoolyard will be quite deserted. There is one child, I believe, that hasn't gone home for many Christmases. I remember, Spirit. Oh. An old toy, Ebenezer? My, my old friend, Dolly Papa, and Valentine. Oh, and my favorite. I wish. Hmm. What's the matter? I, I saw a young girl earlier. I wish I had given her some. That's all. <laughs> Wasn't there one Christmas when things changed? My sister. <laughs> brother. Dear brother. My sister Fanny. <laughs> I'm coming to bring you home, Ebenezer. To bring you home. This was the year. Home for good and all. Home forever and ever. Father is much kinder than he used to be. He spoke so gently to me one night as I was going to bed that I was not afraid to ask him once more if you might come home. And he said, yes, you should. And he's sending me in a coach to bring you. We're to be together all Christmas long and have the merriest time in all the world. The holly and the ivy when they are both full grown. I should hardly believe it. Oh, she was a lovely creature, your sister. Delicate with a heart full of love. True, spirit. So she very true. died a woman and I believe had children. One child. Ah, your nephew, Fred. <laughs> yes. Come, Scrooge. Let us away to another Christmas Eve. <laughs> <laughs> This is the house of Fezziwig. <laughs> and look, there's old Fezziwig. Alive again. You were his apprentice, weren't you? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Shh, now listen. Oh. <clears throat> John, come kiss me now. John, come kiss me now. Now? 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 <laughs> oh, my dearie, won't. Ye kiss me, have ye forgot how? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh Mr. Fessywig, take hold of yourself, husband. Oh, I'm sorry, my dear, but the night is still young. Ah, but you are not. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, it is so good to have you all here, and in the merriest of moods, the floor is swept, the fire is hot, and the spirits are strong. Huzzah! <laughs> Husband, you have...
have not yet asked me for a dance. Oh, quite so, my dear, and a fool I am for it. We'll have this warehouse the finest ballroom in London. Now hop to it, lads, before a man can say Jack Robinson. <laughs> For the briefest of moments, on this night of divine love, not only do we celebrate our Savior's birth, but the love of family and of the dearest of friends. Ebenezer, my dear boy, I am so proud of you. Ebenezer has just finished his internship at our firm and is venturing out as a man into his own business. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh but not alone, for tonight we celebrate their engagement and she said... Yes! Oh. <laughs> hip, hip! Yes. Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! Maestro, to, to your, your task. task. <laughs> Dance. <laughs> Dance. Dance. <laughs> <laughs> money, three or four perhaps? Is that so much that he should deserve such praise? Yes, spirit, that's not it. That's not it at all, don't you understand? Why, a Fezziwig had the power to make our lives happy or unhappy, to make our work easy or hard. Why, the happiness Fezziwig gave us is every bit as great as if it what had cost a fortune. the matter, Ebenezer? Nothing. I, I should like to say a word to my own clerk, Bob Cratchit, please. Hmm. Wasn't there one Christmas Eve that no. we need to visit? No, no, I don't want to see this. Please, Quickly, please. my time grows short. Please, I don't, I don't, I know. Leave me be, please. You are older and wiser too. A man in the prime of his life. Ebenezer, watch. Ebenezer, I thought you'd be ready by now. Bell, I'm counting. Another idol has displaced me. Maybe it can make you happier than I ever could have hoped to. What idol has displaced you? A golden one, Ebenezer. Belle, there is nothing which is so hard as poverty. Nothing. Why do you condemn the pursuit of wealth? It's become everything to you. You've changed. Belle, I've merely grown wise. Everything I do for me, I do for you as well. A marriage contract is an old one. It was made when we were both poor and content to be so. I was a boy. You want other things now. Anything that made my love any worth or value in your sight doesn't matter anymore. Tell me, would you seek me out and try to win me now? I released you from your contract, Ebenezer. No! Don't let her go! I cannot view marriage as a business. It makes a poor bargain for the both of us. I release you with a heart full of love for the man you once were. And might have become. Mm -hmm. 
I just become a, a poor man, threadbare and hungry. Is that what you mean? I fell in love with a poor man. Goodbye, Ebenezer. May you find joy and profit in the life you've chosen. No, no, no. No, 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 no. You delight to torture me. <laughs> come, come, Ebenezer. It's only love, a useless commodity that causes excess children and pain. And the one thing even more ridiculous than Christmas, didn't you say? What, what, what are you doing? You, know, you can't leave me. Don't, what, what I am doing? simply what has passed, Ebenezer. and I can show you all that I can. Show me what? Ebenezer. Show me nothing. Ebenezer. Don't leave me here like this. Ebenezer. The game is up, Marley. Jacob, I will not be haunted. Do you hear me? I will not be haunted. Hello? 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 And just like that, Scrooge was seated back in his bedroom. Hello? In his chair. Scrooge had no awareness that the clock was about to strike two, and he would be visited by the second specter, dispatched by Jacob Marley's intervention. He was fully aware of his surroundings and restored to his cri quiet mind once again. Anyone there? It seemed as if he was prepared for anything. But, but he, he was, was not prepared, prepared for, for nothing. nothing. So naturally, the clock struck two, and no ghost appeared. Well, he was immediately taken by a fit of trembling. <laughs> <laughs> I say, is there anyone in this room? It was just a dream. <laughs> <laughs> You must be. The doctor can knife me. Should I? I'm everywhere if you look. The spirit of Christmas present. Rise and know me better. I will not resist you, spirit, but do not expect me to learn from what you show me. Then this will be a short scene indeed. <laughs> I can understand lessons from the past, but what of the present? I am a man who sees things clearly as they are now. Oh, really? Indeed. I shall learn... Nothing from you. That is because you're a miserly, petty man. Petty, you say? <laughs> yes. Old man, I've been sent to teach you. You've been alone too long, locked up in that counting house inside your crusty shell. Yeah! <laughs> 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 oh, what wonderful smells. Here, eat, drink, <laughs> join in my merriment. Spirit, I'm a man of plain habits. I do not want such extravagance. A miserly sentiment. <laughs> <laughs> and a miserable philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> oh, can you hear it? Hear what? The bells of Christmas. No, I can't. Oh, it's Christmas morning, man. Listen to the sounds of people in the street. Bah. that on unnecessary. Unnecessary. Mrs. McDonald, <laughs> is everything ready for your Christmas dinner? Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. I've been saving up for three months now. Just look at this bird. Oh. Isn't it fine? Yes. And I've got the pudding and all the trimmings and, well, why don't you join us? It's just Tilly and me and, well, nobody likes to be alone on Christmas. That's very kind of you. Yes, I will be glad to be present. Wonderful. Now, don't be late. Okay. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hark 
a skinny chicken. <laughs> skinny. <laughs> oh, it's her happiness in the Christmas season that will make it a rich man's feast. You mean a poor man's feast. You're so mean-spirited, Ebenezer Scrooge. Come, let's away to another Christmas Eve where love and kindness serve to fill the house with richness. Ding dong, merrily on high, in heaven the bells are ringing. Ding dong, merrily the sky is rimmed with angels singing. Oh, Gloria, Hosanna in excelsis. Oh, there's never been such a goose. Now you leave that be. But, Mother. Not until your father, Tim, and Oh, Martha. Martha. <laughs> oh, well, bless my heart alive, my dear. Where's Father? On his way home from the church. Late again, I'm afraid. Oh. Here they come now. Oh, Let's down. both hide. Oh. Let's all hide. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, my boy. Hello. I think we're all alone, Tim. I think so, Father. There's a mouse under there, I see. Yes, Father. <laughs> oh, my. I think there are more than just mice here. <laughs> Perhaps this room is filled with ghosts and spirits and... Ah! Yeah! <laughs> oh, we're under attack! Take cover, Father! <laughs> oh, a fool and happy home! So it seems. For only 15 shillings a week. The boy. Why is he sick? Oh, just, just, I love this part. All right. Bum, 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 bum. And here it bum, is. Bum, 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 the Christmas bum, bum, goose. Bum, 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 bum. Oh! Do you have a thing for food, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Bless my eyes, there's never been such a goose. Never. Certainly not so tender. Oh, flavorful. Oh, and so small, I'm afraid. It's perfect. I hardly think it will feed us all. When it's this wonderful, my dear, you don't need a lot to satisfy you. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. And to our beautiful children, and to the founder of our feast, Mr. Scrooge. Oh, the founder of the feast, indeed. Oh, I wish I had him here, and I would give him a piece of my mind to feast upon, and I hope he'd have an appetite for it. My dear, it's Christmas. We bless everyone. Well, for his sake, and for your sake, Bob Cratchit, and, and to the day, May God bless him in the future as he has this day. God, God bless, bless him. him. God bless us, everyone. <laughs> Quite so, my dear. God bless us, everyone. Truly, Lule, thou little tiny child, bye bye. Not quite enough. What's that, you say? Nothing, eh? I do wish Bob had a bit more for his own. More? Well, that's hardly possible, considering the wage Bob makes, or shall I say, robs from your pocket every 365th day. Do not taunt me thus, spirit. The error of my past now crowds too fast upon me. 
To change is painful. To change takes time. Time. And how much of this most precious gift do you think you have left? Enough, I hope, indeed. It is at this moment my fondest hope. You have a little more time. Spirit, tell me, will he die? Who? The smallest child, Tim. We must move on. What are you not <laughs> telling me, Spirit? <laughs> That's my nephew, Fred. And the young lady? That must be his bride. She's a pretty girl, isn't she? Mm -hmm. All right, Fred. It's your turn. Oh, all right, all right. Back up just a bit. Ah, let's see. Oh, I've got it. Here we go. Oh, that's very good, Fred. Very good indeed. Is it an animal? Yes, it is an animal. Is it alive? Certainly. Only yes or no, Fred, you should know that. Yes. <laughs> Is it agreeable? Uh, no, not agreeable uh, at all. A disagreeable animal. Oh. <laughs> Is it savage? Yes. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a pussycat? No, no it's, it's not, not a, a pussycat. Pussycats, pussycats don't, don't look like, like that. <laughs> Does it walk the streets of London? Yes. Oh, Has it ever been caught? No, but it hunts people down for money. Just <laughs> yes or no, for it. Wait a minute. They talk of me. Well, do you know it's you? <laughs> it's me. It's me. Oh, that's good, Fred. He's quite smart, don't you think? Bladder. Is it a bear? A bear? Here in London? No. Yes, especially <laughs> if you owe him money. Oh, oh, I know what it is, Fred. I know what it is. It's your Uncle Scrooge. Yes. <laughs> First you attract my pity with a sick and crippled child. Now my disdain, as these people laugh and mock at the life I lead, it's an honest life. What? I wish he was here. You know that? Mm. I'm sorry that he misses moments such as these. And no better friends would he find in all of this world. Mm. Not past, present, or future. <laughs> <laughs> I love him despite himself, so I will continue to go to him year after year in hopes that he may change his ways. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old lang syne? Scrooge, Merry Christmas, Uncle, wherever you are. We'll take a cup of kindness yet in the days of old things. Thank you, nephew. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's okay. There, there. <laughs> it's out. <laughs> Mm. That was very nice indeed. Yes, yes. <laughs> He's quite like his mother, don't you think? Enough, enough of your play. It's not working. You know, he wasn't always the man they speak of. Of course not. <laughs> I'm changed. People, people do that. We grow up, we grow old, and then we die. Can I go home now? Not yet. <laughs> Come, my time with you is almost over. Over? Our spirit's lives so short. 
Mine ends tonight. No, tonight. But what do you care since all things die, as you say? I mourn the loss of my sister, and I regret the loss of Bear. But life has consequences. Consequences? Hmm. Come. I'm an old man. Stop this. Uh, <laughs> why are we back here? Shh, shh, shh. I've seen this. I've learned everything. Yes, you've seen it, but your eyes are not yet open. Watch. And how did little Tim behave in church today? Oh, as good as gold, my dear. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> but he often turns thoughtful, sitting by himself so much. Why, he told me on the way home from church that he hoped the people there saw him because he was a cripple. <sighs> How strange. I wonder what prompted him to say that. He said he thought it might be pleasant for them to remember on Christmas Day who made the lame beggars walk and the blind men see. <laughs> Is this all spirit? Watch. Mother, 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 please, it's him. Martha, what happened? Mr. Boy. Oh, what it happened? We to Do something, Bob. It must have been too cold. You should have come home. Get the doctor, Peter. Spirit, please, no, what can be done? in the chimney corner and a crutch carefully preserved if these shadows remain unaltered no, no, no kind spirit say he will be spared the child will die but he's just a boy and what responsibility do you bear for it what am I to do people get sick people die every day and if he is to die Best he does so this day and decreases the surplus population. I refuse to guilt you lay upon me. It is the only debt Ebenezer. you owe. Debt? What do you know? Of? Debt? Uh, spirit! No spirit, don't leave me. No, don't leave me, Spirit. Please don't leave me. I will learn the lessons, please. You can't leave me here. Ebenezer Scrooge! Go, go! Jesus. Scrooge did not sleep well. He did not sleep at all. Instead, he paced miserably in his room. And waited. And waited. Because Scrooge knew there was one more phantom yet to come. No! Am I? Am I in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come? And will you show me the shadows of things that will happen in the time to come? Phantom of the future, I fear you more than any other. But Jacob said your purpose was to do me good and let me be a better man. So I am prepared to go with you. Will you not speak to me? Lead on, spirit, lead on. The night is fading fast and it is precious time, I know. Lead on, lead on. No, I do not know how he died. I simply know that he did. When did he die? Uh, yesterday, I believe. What was the matter with him? I thought he'd never die. God knows. <laughs> but what has he done with his money? Oh, I haven't heard. Left it to company, perhaps. Well, he hasn't left it to me. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's likely to be a very cheap funeral. I don't know anyone who would go to it. Well, is lunch provided? Lunch? They best feed me if they expect me to show. You will eat, Hello there, me beauty. Welcome to my prestigious parlor. No better place than your company, old Joe. We are well matched indeed, Miss Dilba. Let's get on with it. Aye, he ain't planning to put up an argument with us, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> What's the lot of a few small things such as these not to dead men, I suppose? <laughs> I opened up the coffin to have a look at him. Get away. Bless us! <laughs> I thought he was ugly when he was alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you call all this? Ah, his bed curtains. 
You don't mean to tell me you took him down rings and all with him lying there. Yes, I do. Why not? You were born to make your fortune. <laughs> <laughs> 18 shillings. You know, I always give too much to the ladies. Well, that's the end of him. Oh, the end. He frightened everyone away when he was alive to profit us when he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> These people seem quite happy this poor fellow has died. What kind of man could exact such... Hard feelings from these people. Spirit, help me! Show me some tenderness connected with the dead. Some sorrow for the passing of a soul. Give me some hope! Father? Oh, hello, my dears. I thought we'd come join you today. It was good of you to come and see how green a place it has become. He was so small. So very, very small. Father, left us at the church. Thank you, my boy. May I read this poem? Yes, my dear. Mark 9.36 and he took the child and placed it in the midst of them and said, he who receives one such child receives me. Amen. Amen. I am sure that however and whenever we do part from one another, we shall none of us forget poor tiny Tim, shall we? Never, Father. Never. <laughs> no, no, no. Not <laughs> Tiny Tim. Will this torment never end? How long must you haunt me? I know my past, but what of the future? Are these the shadows of things that will be? Or are they the shadows of things that may be only? I refuse to mourn the dead, for all must die. If he is to die, best he should do it soon and decrease the surplus population. But I can't bear the thought of Tiny Tim's death. And what concern could that possibly be to you? Somebody should have helped him. You're rich enough. What could I have done? Love, a useless commodity. Another idol has displaced us. Excess children in pain. He should have been nicer in his lifetime. There is nothing which is so hard as poverty. Come home, Ebenezer. Fred! She died a woman. And had one child. Fred! Founder of the feast indeed. You could have saved him. But if my actions change, the end must change. Are there no prisons? Are there no prisons? No, 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 no. Are there no prisons? No, 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 I'm not the man who spoke those words. Words must speak it. Do not be silly, darling. Then what shall become of me? I'm changed. I'm not. I'm not and the... just like that, Scrooge was back. My own house. At home. My own room. Alive. My own self. He was as light as a feather. <laughs> <laughs> Merry as a schoolboy. <laughs> Happy as an angel. <laughs> I don't know quite what to do. I don't know what day it is. I don't know what month it is. I don't know how long I've been among the spirits. I don't know anything at all. <laughs> I'm quite a baby. <laughs> Never mind. I'd rather be a baby. <laughs> so Scrooge ran to his window and yelled out to all, what day is it? And all who could hear shouted back, it's Christmas day. Scrooge ran to his window. Yeah, hello, hey there. What day is this? 
And all who could hear shouted back, It's Christmas Day! A Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone! <laughs> oh, the spirits have done it in one night! How wonderful! I haven't missed it! I will honor Christmas in my heart every day and try to live it all year round. I will live in the past, present, and future. The spirit of heaven and Christmas shall abide in my heart. Oh, I have so much to do. So he put on his coat. And so many people to see. And grabbed his hat. And set off to the streets. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hey. <laughs> Merry Christmas, sir. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, hi. Uncle Scrooge. <laughs> Nephew, my own dear boy. Uh, uncle, are you quite well? Oh, yes. I am in resounding health. Best I've felt in years. Lord bless you. Uh, has something happened, Uncle? Oh, yes. It's as if I've had a long fever. But it has passed, and the man you see before you is a new man. Sure enough, I see before me a well man. Ha! Nephew, Christmas is a kind, wonderful, forgiving time. I, I was hoping... Would you like to join us for dinner, Uncle? Yes! Oh. No. Uh, sir? Nephew, haven't you always said in the long calendar of a year the only time when men and women open up their shut-up hearts freely is Christmas? Yes! <laughs> well... Oh. Oh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, yeah. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Um, Mrs. MacDonald. Ah, oh, Mr. Scrooge. Blessings of the day to you, sir. And tidings of the season to you, madam. Sir? It's Christmas Day. Yes, it is. And will you be having your normal soup tonight? Oh, no, that will never do. Well, I'm, I'm on my way home to prepare a Christmas dinner for Tilly and myself. You're welcome to join us. We've got the bird and all the trimmings. Madam, I've seen your goose. Mr. Scrooge! Listen, do you know the butcher shop at the end of the street, the prize turkey hanging in the window? Aye, I've been eyeing that beast for three days now. It's extravagant. Go and buy it straight away. In fact, buy all the fixings too. Spare no expense and bring it to my shop later this afternoon. Should you do that? Your shop? Yes, I've invited my nephew and his bride, and I'm hoping others will join us too. <laughs> Madam. About the loan, never mind. Your debt is paid in full. <clears throat> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas. 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 Merry I wasn't expecting you. There's been a development. Sir? At the shop. Do you need me? Yes. Mr. Scrooge? Madam? Would you like to come in? We were just getting ready for lunch. I need you at the shop. But it's Christmas Day. <laughs> it's Christmas Day indeed. Oh. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh. <laughs> Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Well, who is this fine lad? Well, I would be Tim. Tim Crutchet. Well, Merry Christmas, Tim Crutchet. What a fine young boy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Would you like to join us? 
Oh no, I was hoping you all would join me. I don't understand. We are to have a grand feast, and all of you are invited. Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> Bob, friend, what do I pay you? Well, sir, I really don't think that's, that's not enough for a fine family such as this first thing in the morning. I'm giving you a raise. We'll double it. Oh. Mr. Scrooge. No, 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 no. We'll triple it. Oh, <laughs> triple it. Oh. Oh, and many years too late in coming, dear lady. I do hope you'll both forgive me. Oh, Mr. Scrooge, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas Eve. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your king. Good tidings for Christmas and a Happy New Year. Scrooge was true to his word and did infinitely more. He gathered family, friends, and neighbors for a celebration. The place was filled with laughter and joy. Huzzah! <laughs> and Scrooge never knew that being with others can make him so happy. I am indeed happy. And that giving to others could make him so rich. My heart is full. And that caring for others can make him so loved. Tiny Tim. Who did not die, but became like a son. And the miser once known as the agent of debt. Soon became a steward of generosity. And no other man loved Christmas as much as he. Indeed, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Wait, what? Where did everyone go? Did, did this really happen? It can. What do you mean? The future is yet to be. Oh, I see. I see. These, these are but shadows and visions of things that will be. If my actions change, my end will change. I will change. I am changed. God bless you, Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge. God bless us, everyone. That was very kind of you. You may be seated. With your permission, I will speak in my normal dialect. Good old Southern boy, if that's all right with everybody. I told Pastor before this event, the last time I was in this room was playing basketball on the floor underneath your feet and was getting soundly defeated by Butler High School. So it has a little bit of PTSD for me to come back in here. <laughs> What's ironic is I was down the road in Decatur in my junior year of high school playing basketball, and uh, I did not know the Lord, and I was assigned a term paper in English class. 
And I picked, I picked the subject of ghosts and poltergeists, of all things. A little bit of foreshadowing there. And I used the Bible as a bibliography when Jesus walked on the water. And uh, they said it's not him but his ghost. Two years later, I was actually visited by a ghost, and it changed my life. It was the Holy Ghost who came into my life. And he did what he does. He convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and the judgment to come. And, uh, and I kept saying in my heart, just like screws, the air of my past now crowds too fast to pull me. And I knew that I'd had bad thoughts and said wrong things and done bad things and failed to do the right things. I knew that. But I was stubborn. I was stubborn, just like Scrooge, who said, I refuse to learn the lesson that you show me, Spirit. I, I didn't... I didn't learn the lesson, but God was and is patient. And he kept telling me the lesson that God is real and that he has a son named Jesus. And Jesus came to the earth to live a perfect life. He never had a bad thought. He never said a bad word. He never did the wrong thing. He did, always did the right thing. Even as he's dying for our sins, he's looking down from the cross and taking care of his mother. The Spirit of God began to show me all those things. And my Jacob Marley was a man named Luther Reeder from Opelika, Alabama, an Auburn graduate who was a math teacher in an inner city school who took an interest in me and took me to a Pentecostal church of all things, and my life was transformed, changed. And I could say like Scrooge, I am not the man I was. I am changed, and it was just a prayer away just like it is for all of us in this room. Just a prayer away. I want you to notice all the people's lives that were changed and assisted because of Ebenezer Scrooge's transformation. Mrs. McDonald's life was changed. She got, she got debt relief, hallelujah. Cratchit, Cratchit's wife, Peter, Martha, Tiny Tim was rescued. I'd like to sell you on this. If you are away from God a million miles or 300 feet, like Peter was away from Jesus when he stood on the shore, Simon Peter was in the boat. He knew there was somebody there, but didn't know who it was. Wherever you are in your distance from the Lord, to be away is to be away is to be away. You can be transformed and changed, and you can indeed be happy and light as a feather. Now, if you won't change for yourself, so that you can have your feet on streets of gold a million years from today. That you can be transformed and changed and happy and holy and healthy and strong and spiritually healthy. If you won't do it for you, would you do it for the people whose lives all around you will be influenced because of your transformation? Your children, your grandchildren, your future mate. I just sent a text to my office today. And I said, please send $10,000 to the Chiang Rai Children's Home in Chiang Rai, Thailand. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying because God transformed my life, that's just a small thing, but I'm able to influence people over on the other side of the world, and you can too. God can do anything. And just like Ebenezer said to Mrs. McDonald, Jesus can say to you, your debt is paid in full. And it's not a fancy prayer. We come to God like little children, right? We come to him like a little child. Kids, one, one kid told me in the gym, the grandma said, tell Pastor Joe, tell Pastor Joe what you did last night. He said, I asked Jesus in my heart. I like cake. That's just how we come to the Lord. <laughs> like a kid. I've heard fancy prayers, Lord, as you look over the balconies of heaven, marshal your influences at the superfluity of naughtiness. I think the angels look at each other sometimes and say, I got nothing on that. I don't know what that guy's talking about. No, we come to him saying, I need you, Lord. Forgive me of all of my sins. If you're away from him today, I'm going to pray for you. And then I'm going to pray with you. We'll stumble through that, stutter through that a little bit on purpose together, making it your prayer. There'll be a three-word public prayer in the middle of that, and I'll tell you when to pray it. And then I'll pray for you at the end. 
So let's bow our heads. If you're away from the Lord, let me pray for you. Lord, your mercy is everlasting. Nobody in this room has done anything so bad they can't receive your mercy. One of our greatest heroes, the Apostle Paul, who wrote a third of the New Testament, was an accomplice to murder over and over again. You can forgive us of anything and everything, and I pray for the people that are away from you that they'll understand the simplicity of your gospel. Repent, believe, and trust only in Jesus Christ as they pray a simple prayer. Pray something like this to the Lord. Make it your prayer. Here I am, God, dear God, this is me. God, I know that I've had wrong thoughts. God, I know I've said things I shouldn't. Not just cussed, but cursed life. And I've done things that are wrong and failed, and I failed to do the right thing. I know all that. I knew that waking up. And I confess that I've grieved the Holy Spirit. Forgive me. But I also confess something else today. I want to count to three. I'd like everybody from Pastor Rusty to the newest visitor to say out loud these three words, Jesus is Lord. Can we do that together on the count of three? One, two, three. Jesus is Lord. Thank you. And now back to our prayer. Did you hear me, God? I said Jesus is Lord. In my heart, I believe God raised Jesus from the dead. With my mouth, I confessed him as my Lord. I don't understand all of this. But I want all of this. And I pray that you will forgive me as I receive and accept Jesus today as my Savior and Lord. Come on into my heart. Come, come on into my heart. I give you everything. Thank you. Now, God, I pray for those who prayed that simple prayer or something like it, that the roots will go down deep and find that living water and the fruit of discipleship will go up high. Nothing will steal what you planted in the heart. No birds of the air, cares of the earth, no hard places, no difficult places, but that they'll bear fruit and that their transformation will touch people that they've never dreamed could be touched and lives will be changed for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give the Lord a mighty praise today? John, somebody prayed that prayer. Won't it be cool a million years from today when we walk and bump into each other in heaven and we ask each other, how'd you get here? Well, I listened to an old Billy Graham rerun, gave my heart to Christ. Somebody might say, well, I, I came to the altar after one of Pastor Rusty Nelson's sermons, Pastor Lisa's sermons. And somebody in this room is going to say, I think I prayed with Ebenezer Scrooge. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I want to thank you, Pastor Rusty Nelson. Man, I love you. And... Uh, how about your kids from The Rock that were here? Dude, weren't they fantastic? <laughs> Huntsville native, now living in Charlotte, North Carolina. Jerry Skaggs and I collaborated. He wrote the thing that you just saw on stage. He's back there. Give Jerry Skaggs a round of applause. <laughs> amazing, Pastor Jerry. That was amazing. You, you have a card in your hand, and this is what I'd like you to do. We're going to give away some stuff. I'm going to give Pastor Rusty some books that I wrote. I will not tell you that they're on the bestseller list. That would be a lie, but they're okay. I mean, they're okay books. You might want to just put a card in there. Uh, there's a devotional book I'm really pleased with called Three for 30. It's a devotional book, 30 days, three words a day. There's a book on family called Fundamentals in Family Life. I wrote with the Global Teen Challenge Director, Dr. Jerry Nance, and a book that I really appreciate called uh, The Third Chair, Implementing Lasting Change. And I'm not selling any of these at all. I'm just giving them away. We've, we produced a movie called Aren't You Somebody? There's a brand new hat. I've only worn it twice, so it's got a little of my scent. No, I've never worn that. We're giving away some product, the Christmas Carol Experience, designed by uh, our producer, director, uh, Pastor Jerry Skaggs. We're giving away some other stuff, too. You know, giving away a monitor. There, I saw a lamp in the green room. If you leave your purse, we're throwing that in the bucket. All the Auburn stuff in his office, we're giving that away, of course. <laughs> the only way to get that is to uh, take that card and, and fill it out. Give us a way to contact you when pastors staff meeting and they draw it out, they do a Facebook Live or whatever they're going to do, and, they, and they, they draw your name, that we'll know how to get it to you. So an email address, phone number at the very least. But this is what I'm going to ask you to do. The Rock's given this to the community. We're not asking for much. I'm going to ask you for this. It has nothing to do with win winning a gift. So in that respect, it could be called a gimmick, but it's a, it's a holy gimmick. If you prayed that prayer, 
we believe God will transform your life by faith. So we're asking you symbolically and metaphorically to transform that card by tearing any one of the corners. Just pick a corner and tear that card. Now, what, what will that do? It's a testimony. We overcome the devil by the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony. It's a little testimony. And when Pastor Rusty sees a stack of cards on his desk and sees your torn card, he'll know that in the midst of a global pandemic, that something written in the 1800s and put on a stage in Huntsville, Alabama in 2020 has an eternal impact on your life. Won't that be cool? Won't that be awesome? At the other campuses, you have a connect card. Just do the same thing. Name and phone number, tear it. He'll tell you another way to do it electronically. But may I finally say to you one more time, Merry Christmas and God bless you.